Ferguson from Trent Micro. Rick, welcome to Interpol World TV. Thank you. Um, what are Trent Micro up to these days? Trend Micro, um, as a security organization, you know, we've already celebrated uh, a couple of years ago our 25th anniversary. So we've been at the forefront of security innovation for a long time. Um, the areas where we're focusing right now are certainly on uh, protection from highly targeted attacks, individualized malware against uh, global corporations. Um, and actually, we're, I guess, number one in the market in cloud and virtualization protection, so protecting data centers and protecting uh, virtualized network infrastructure and the, the data held within those multi-tenanted environments. Um, the reason why I'm here at Interpol World uh, is to talk about our research into um, Project 2020, which was a, an initiative with Europol and ICSPA looking at the, the future of technology and the criminal opportunities that may arise from that. We hear a lot about the threat. How much of it's actually real? Um, how much of it is hype? And what concerns you most? It's a good question. Um, and actually, in, in a presentation that I was giving last week, um, one of the, the two illusions that I was trying to bust in that presentation is that um, malware, APT, targeted attack, they're all marketing speak for the same thing. That seems to be a perception that, that people have, and that maybe security companies have to in continuously invent new scary things because people stop being scared enough of the old stuff, so we have to make up a new scary thing to get people to buy more stuff. Absolutely not true. Um, you know, we have no need to invent anything. And I think the, the phenomenon of, of the targeted attack where uh, an organization or a, a skilled group will go after a chosen target, they'll do their research up front, identify the employees, identify the teams, um, identify the relationships, create an attack specifically designed to target that organization um, and they will keep trying until they're successful. It's not an opportunistic attack anymore. This is a real significant development in cybercrime. It originally started with attacks on larger enterprises, but like everything in cybercrime, it trickles down and filters down and we're reaching the stage where every attack really, to one extent or another, is a targeted attack. Um, so, you know, people are concerned, people see the news about attacks on Google, attacks on Adobe, attacks on Target, attacks on Home Depot, um, and they're right to be concerned. These attacks are very successful, they generate huge amounts of money for the criminal underworld, uh, and they result in tens of millions of US dollars worth of loss for affected organizations. But as I say, the, the investment and the expertise put in by the, the high-end cyber criminals for these widely publicized attacks is trickling down. So even a, you know, a budding novice cyber, cyber criminal can take advantage of the tools and technologies developed uh, to target you know, small and medium businesses as well. So given your in-depth knowledge of um, the, the market and the threats that are out there, what scares you most? I think internet of everything, wearable technology, and it comes together with cloud and virtualization um, because right now a lot of the the research into wearable technology and internet of, of everything devices and, and services and processes focuses on the end device so you know you see stuff at Black Hat for example where people are looking at uh, whatever home security systems webcams or wearable technology whatever it might be um, but we need to remember that actually the the weak point is very probably going to be cloud and data center because those wearable technology, those endpoint devices are low power, low processing ability, low storage. They're designed as data capture devices. But the value to you as an individual and to and to the manufacturers is in the data in the data center. It's about, you know, getting all of that data in one place, mining the data and creating something out of that data which is bigger than, than the sum of its parts. Um, unfortunately, being able to test on a security level someone's data center is a lot less legal than mm. buying one of their products and doing security research on that and working out where the vulnerabilities are. You know, if you're not invited to penetration test someone's cloud, you shouldn't be doing it. It's, it's illegal. Um, so there's a lot of focus, I think, that still needs to go into securing that cloud and that virtual infrastructure which is behind Internet of Everything. Alongside that, and related as well, is that we need to remember that IOE, Internet of Everything, is not just about new technology. In very large part, it's also about legacy technology. It's about integrating pre-existing technologies. One great example is uh, radio, which was not designed for the Internet. It was, you know, predates the Internet by a considerable margin. Uh, but now we have the advent of software-defined radio, and we're beginning to see things like AIS, the shipping protocol, um, being brought online and Trend Micro discovered numerous vulnerabilities in that protocol which would allow an attacker to divert a ship, 
to change the transponder on the ship to make them um, basically appear offline, to fake uh, a ship in the water, to fake a man in the water alert. And we know, for example, that Somali pirates already use AIS information almost as a shopping list. So they know who's coming down the Gulf of Aden on a certain day, um, you know, which cargoes might be interesting. And if they begin to exploit those vulnerabilities in that and in other legacy technologies that are connected to this internet of everything, um, it's really uh, you know, a perfect storm. And how important are events such as Interpol World in, in getting the message out? Interpol, well, these kinds of events in general are fantastic, but it's great to see Interpol being a leader in this space, um, you know, opening the, the new center, inviting um, law enforcement, but also academia and private industry to take part. Uh, to, you know, we have uh, embedded resources with Interpol in the new center, um, and it's great to see that it's a new culture of sharing and it's less of a culture of, of competition, and I think an event like this really illustrates that. Rick, thank you very much indeed for talking to Interpol World Television. Pleasure, thank you.